Warning, this video may contain foul language and mech on mech mayhem. Viewer discretion is advised. HPG Manifold. Okay, so here's the deal. We are in the Roughneck 3A. I've got seven medium pulse lasers. Medium pulse lasers are great weapons, and they do fit well on the Roughneck 3A. Now, um, basically what this is, is we just got hit by a hurricane, and my power had been out for almost four, almost five days. Probably about four days. So, <clears throat> um, I am playing a match right now and finishing up this video. Uh, after this match will probably be the intro to my video and it will be from four days ago. I tried to upload it before the hurricane hit, but it didn't actually work. So this video was actually meant to be put out days and days ago, but I'm just playing an extra match to add on to the to this part here, so. Target acquired. Uh seven medium pulse pulse lasers, uh is pretty good for a heavy mech. Um, they're great weapons. They can rack up damage quick, focuses the energy and the damage onto um, the target, and they're just good weapons. Medium pulse lasers are great weapons, especially when bunched together. And the Roughneck 3A, although it's not lore friendly, which we'll end up talking about, it's still a. Um, I still look as it, at it as it like a mech. You know what I mean? It's still a mech. And chances are. Um, somewhere within the Battletech universe, there were industrial or construction mechs that were being fitted uh, with similar weapons. Maybe not seven medium pulse lasers, but um, I definitely have read and uh, quite a few Battletech books and mech warrior novels about construction and industrial mechs being fitted for battle because the clan or the house or the uh, unit. The guard unit didn't have enough uh, resources or enough mechs, and that's all they had. So some pilots were piloting these construction mechs that had a chainsaw for a hand and, you know, an auto cannon on its shoulder. They used what they had. They definitely used what they had. All right. New target acquired. This mech definitely has some good hard points, although using seven medium lasers or seven medium pulse lasers really doesn't show you that. Uh, using large lasers or PPCs, putting them up in the torsos, um, great spot to have them because how high they are. So it's it's pretty spread all across the mech. New target acquired. I do not know how I missed that shot there. That was it. That was going to be it for that. Uh, I think the Incubus has been released today, so that's great. Another new mech. They've also got some really good deals going on right now. Um, some deals that I've never seen before, and they're actually worth the money. Uh, normally they have the dropship deals where you pay, you know, 25 bucks and you get five mechs of your choice. Right now, they've got, if you pay $30, you can choose, I think it's five hero light mechs, four hero mediums, um, four or three hero heavies, and like three hero assault for 30 bucks. That is a good deal considering that one, say I wanted to get the bounty hunter, the marauder hero mech, that mech itself is $30 just to get the MC to buy it. And you're telling me that I could get two or three extra ones for the same price extra hero max it's a it's a really good deal and I'm definitely gonna take advantage of it um, I mean you can get I, I'm pretty sure it's like five uh, light hero max or four or five medium heroes for 30 bucks and then it goes down once you get to the heavies and the assaults I think it's like three or four I'm pretty sure it's only three assaults you can get three hero assault max for 30 bucks and three or four heavy assault or heavy Hero Max for 30 bucks. It's uh, it's on the page. You should take a look at it. It's worth the money if you're looking to get a Hero Mech. Um, 
I'm either going to go with the mediums or the heavies. I have wanted to try the Bounty Hunter Hero Max, so that might be... I might be getting some heavy Hero Max here. But the medium ones, I definitely want the Yin... Uh, <coughs> excuse me, the Yin Lo Wang Centurion Mech. That's the mech I definitely want to get at some point, because it's just such a classic mech. And I'm reading Blood of Kerensky, Blood of Kerensky again, and the Yin Lo Wang is actually in that book. Piloted by Kai Allard. His father being Justin Allard in the Solaris V Championships. That's where he used that Centurion Hero Mech. And his father uh, handed it down to him to fight in the clan invasion. I almost got it there. That was pretty close. I wasn't really. I was kind of talking. I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on. Kind of just walked through the, the destruction there. Um, a good match though. Twelve to five. They put up a good fight. Medium pulse lasers on the roughneck is a good idea. Although this video is going to be focusing on a different build, using PPCs. We did a good amount of damage. Medium pulse lasers really rack it up. But let's go ahead and get this video started. Welcome to Mech Warrior Online. This is Fuzzy Nova, and today we've got the Roughneck, uh, the Roughneck 3A. I have not done a Roughneck in a while. It's been a good minute since I did a Roughneck video. Main reason is because uh, it's not really lore friendly, and I'm gonna be putting that aside today. Uh, if you're not really into BattleTech lore, know much about it, um, basically. Uh, the Roughneck is not uh, a real mech within Battletech. It's uh, all the other mechs in this game actually are, I, I think. Yeah, all the other mechs are at, all the other mechs are actually from Battletech, but this is the only one that PGI created um, themselves. Uh, I think Russ Bullock was actually the creator of this, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, really no lore on this. There's a little, like a little splash of lore kind of um, but I'm gonna be putting that aside and I'm just gonna uh, solely review this mech in general without the negative thoughts of it not being lore friendly I guess that's kinda salty in a way but um, yeah okay so the roughneck it's a really good looking mech it's got some good hard points it's got an awesome design. It's really cool. It's a, a, a hard-hitting heavy, a very strong heavy, and they are known to be great brawl mechs. Good brawl builds. These things can brawl. Trust me. Um, and the hard points on them, they're pretty good. They can hold a lot of weapons. It can do a lot of damage. It can take a significant amount of damage and keep going. Um, it's a good mech, and I want to like it. I do like it, but I, I want it. I wish, really wish, that it was um, a real BattleTech uh, mech. There, there has to be a mech that looks like this in the BattleTech lore, right? There's got to be. Anyways, I, I mean, I understand if you're creating, if you're doing a BattleTech mech warrior video game. Your anyone's dream would be to create a mech and put it in the game, right? I mean, I would do the same thing probably. Uh, so the little bit of lore that I'm gonna try to push on this, probably in one of my clips, is that it's a forestry mech, right? That's what it is. It's a forestry mech that's been refitted for battle. Um, and that was the thing. Uh, construction mechs, forestry mechs. If the militia or the clan or the, the, I don't know, whatever, the unit didn't have enough resources or mechs, they would refit, they would get the mechanics to refit uh, a forestry mech or a construction mech with weapons. And uh, I've actually been reading a book, it's called Trial by Chaos. Uh, it's a battle tech, oh no, it's actually a mech warrior dark age book. Um, but they did this with a forestry mech in the book. So uh, 
they put like auto cannons and like large lasers on it and it was like the, <laughs> the pilot was like ah this is crazy because he had never piloted a forestry mech and it had like a chainsaw for one hand and um so yeah and i, I really think the original artwork of, the, of this mech right here did have a chainsaw i think you could, could can kind of see wait is it on there no, but the, the, basically the hands of this, the Roughneck, are supposed to have chainsaws, I believe. Unless I just made that up. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure I'm right, though. Anyways, good mech. Um, we're going to do this stock. Um, I don't do stock videos that often, which me which means I'm, I'm not messing with anything. I'm not doing my own build. I'm playing it as is. We're doing it ha how it comes. Because he created the Roughneck and he created the Variants. Um, so it's a little bit different in that aspect. He, he created the Variants the way he wanted them. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're doing the 3A. Which is the all-energy Roughneck. Um, all the other Roughneck Variants focus on Ballistic Hard Points. This is the only one that doesn't have any. And I thought that was interesting. So I was like, let's go with that. I'm not going to touch anything on this. We're going to use it as is and it's got PPCs the weapons that I the PPCs are the weapons that I rarely use hardly ever so this should be fun right alright so it's 65 ton heavy mech inner sphere heavy mech um, it's got seven energy hard points seven so that's quite a bit uh, 65 tons you can do a lot with that energy wise a lot of options here um, but we are going with its stock so let's talk about the weapons its main weapons are its two PPCs in each arm. I've got one on the right arm, one on the left. PPCs, uh, I, don't, I don't use them a lot. Um, they are um, a, f a focused, you know, a focus fire uh, weapon, um, pinpoint damage. Uh, they have a 90 meter range, uh, minimum range. I did not know that. Don't wait. ER PPCs don't have a minimum range, do they? What the fuck? Why wouldn't I just use those? That's some bullshit. Just because they're more? Ah, fuck it. I'm, I'm not going to change it. I'm going to leave it as is. Damn it, I want to use for ERPPCs. I'm not going to. Anyways. I did not know that. I just found... I've been playing this game for years. and that Well, that shows you how much I use PPCs. Because I did not know that regular PPCs have a 90 meter minimum range. So, uh, if you're up close, your PPCs are going to do no damage. Damn it. Well, that kind of sucks. They should change that. Anyways, so we got two PPCs. We've also got four medium lasers, two in each torso. These torsos are high mounted, so that's good. The PPCs are in the arms, which are lower, but that's okay. And then it has a little small laser in the head, a little tiny small laser there. I feel like upgrading, I really want to upgrade all these to ERs. ER PPCs, ER mediums, ER smalls. We do have quite a bit of uh, double heat sinks. Uh, we've got uh, eight, eight double heat sinks and a standard 260 engine, which gives me a top speed of 64.8 kph, which is fine. Heavy heavy mechs normally go this speed anyways. Armor points. I pushed uh, most of my armor towards my front like I normally do. Um, so the Roughneck has a lot of armor in its CT and I, a significant amount in its torsos. So it, it's there. It's there to brawl. And if, uh, let's see, what, 86 CT, 60 torsos, 40 arms, 58 in the legs. Good amount. Um, structures. Uh, Indo Steel would give me some extra tonnage. Gave me quite a bit of extra tonnage. And, uh, I'm having a hard time not switching these to ER PPCs. I really want to. But screw it, why? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. This is how it's supposed to come. Heat management with this is 1.32 out of 2. So not bad. Not bad. Uh, enhancements. It only comes with base armor uh, quirks. That's it. Base armor quirks. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so armor is almost maxed out. Not too bad. Let's take another look at this mech before we head out on the battlefield. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> having your PPCs up in the torsos would be another alternative than your arms. Um, just just to get that high mounted PPC, you know, it's it's a good place to put them. But uh, yeah, not too bad. It's a good looking mech. It's a fun mech. 
it's a good choice and they are very popular there has not been a decrease in popularity of the roughneck it's always been popular since it came out and you got some pilots that won't even use this thing just because of the fact that it's not lore friendly but hey it's still a mech it's still a mech and all mechs have to start someplace right uh, man, that hurricane! We're in the middle of a hurricane right now, and uh, <laughs> it's it's starting to get it's starting to get here. So, who my power might cut out at any minute. Maybe I'll be able to put this video. Out. I don't know. I guess if you're watching it, then it worked. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get to a match. I'll see you guys on the battlefield. Today's lesson is on the Roughneck, a militarized battle mech version of Akuna's Loader King Industrial Mech. The Roughneck is a low-cost heavy mech intended for price-conscious buyers such as planetary militias and down-on-their-luck mercenary units. During the massive expansion in production to recoup the horrendous losses suffered during the initial clan invasion of 3049, while for the most part Akuna focused on its existing lines for designs such as the Enforcer, Dervish, and Locust, one lead designer suggested the radical idea of transforming the company's popular competitor to Sitwell Corporation's Powerman into a true battle mech. Despite the Loader King's superb reputation for taking a beating, many balked at overhauling the design with battle mech grade components and only the belief of the lead designer, and if rumors are to be believed a spot of blackmail against Akuna's CEO, got the roughneck into production. Weapons and Equipment Weighing in at 65 tons, unlike many of the battle mech designs produced by Akuna in the 3050s, the Roughneck is built almost entirely out of so-called Succession War era technology, with the only modern inclusion being case-mounted in each torso. A 260-rated standard fusion engine propels the Roughneck at 64.8 km per hour, putting it in the common Succession War heavy mech speed range. Where the Roughneck suffers most against more modern designs is heat dissipation, mounting only 14 standard heat sinks. Featuring a mixed if short-ranged weapons loadout, the Roughneck's primary weapons are an AC-10 and SRM-4 in its torsos, supported by a trio of machine guns and a head-mounted small laser. While tying it to supply lines, two tons of SRM and autocannon rounds provide adequate field endurance, only a ton and a half of rounds supporting three machine guns run dry quickly. Frozen City <coughs> in the Roughneck 3A. Uh, a good map since I do have uh, uh, a hot build. Although the heat management on this stock build isn't bad. Um, so yeah. I do, I do stock builds every now and then. Kind of shows you what the mech uh, is supposed to do. How it's supposed to come. And it's, it's it's more interesting when you do the stock builds with, um, you know, uh, BattleTech lore-friendly mechs. Every other mech except this one, because that's how it came in the original design. But um, even then, maybe the Roughneck will be added into the lore at some point. Maybe a, a mech warrior a novel or a BattleTech novel, if they're still even making them. I don't know if if they're still making BattleTech books. Not sure. Target acquired. And this will be the only game that the Roughneck is Destroyed. probably ever showcased in. Um, Mech Warrior 5? I doubt it. Maybe. I don't know. That's a good question. Will the Roughneck be in Mech Warrior 5? Um, similar people are creating that game, so maybe. Alright, so, um, my PPCs have a great range, although they are not ER PPCs. Um, they can definitely reach across the map. The 
cockpit of the Roughneck is really cool as well. I do like it. It's very open. It's got that rough, um, urban type of feel. It's it's a really cool looking mech. So don't let that ruin it for you. I'm trying to keep that from happening. Um, and who knows, maybe there is something on Sona about the Roughneck now. Maybe there is. I feel like if you do create a mech for MechWarrior online, that you would try to uh, incorporate it somewhere within the Battletech universe yourself. Because if, if, you know, if you're Russ, I'm sure you got to have connections, you know. Hell, I even messaged the guy that wrote Trial by Chaos, the Mech Warrior Dark Age, one of the one of the uh, one of the novels. I uh, messaged him on Facebook, and hell, he answered back. It's a good book. Um, of course, I prefer BattleTech books. The Mech Warrior Dark Age uh, books aren't that bad. But they have some good ones. I'm going to try to engage this Marauder. He's on this corner right here, but I do have a feeling like I'm going to be out in the open and I'm going to get targeted here soon. Who the hell is behind me shooting me in the back? Ah, shit. Alright, I need to move. As you can see, I'm taking some heavy damage, but my armor is still okay. Was that Roughneck shooting me in the back this whole time? Because there was no enemies behind me. So I just literally got shot in the back like 10 times by that Roughneck. Or whoever it was. I don't know. Firing both PPCs actually isn't, doesn't give me that high of a heat spike. Of course I'm on Frozen City, so it's it's a, it's a colder map, but... I thought I was going to get a higher heat spike than, than that. So we're just laying down some cover fire here. Uh, I, f I do want to push at some point. I'm just kind of waiting for everyone to, to do that. Um, maybe if I go, they'll follow. I don't know. Yeah, let's go ahead and push forward. Looks like we all got the same idea. The Atlas is pushing, so we're going to push with the Atlas as well and give some return fire to cover his ass. Rifleman is pushing as well. meter range. Watch it, watch it, pull back, pull back, pull back. Oh, I got him. Ah, oh, I didn't think I was going to get him. I, I got him at that last second there with those medium lasers. Nice. We got a mad cat and a crab. Um, not not so much worried about the crab. More worried about this mad cat sitting right here. That was very close. I don't want to overheat again, so we need to be very careful. That was very close as well. This crab is very well armored, and he's been taking some some heavy hits here. We are tied at the moment. I'm gonna try to stick in this position here at this corner. As you can see, that PPC shot missed as my arms are uh, lower, and it kind of they're kind of level with the ground here. Oh, taking some LRM fire. We just blew off the arm of the crab there. His CT is now open. If I can get that shot in, I will definitely try here. But we've got a Mad Cat and a Kodiak pushing us, along with LRM fire. It's just a mess. And, uh, where's that crab going? That crab's trying to sneak around. I know he is. Yep, there he is. Uh, should I pay attention to the... Let's see if I can snag this crab there. Oh, come on. 
shit. Fuck them. Alright, screw the crab, they've got it. Ah shit, what do I get? I got a piranha. Oh, it's always a piranha. It's always a piranha. And I'm... I can't shake them here. A lot of the times when I'm being attacked by a piranha, what I'll do is I'll turn with them, then I'll stop, and I'll wait for them to come around, and then I'll blast them. But, yeah, they don't always do that. Most piranha pilots will. It's a common, they like to circle you. And if you can't keep up with them, if they're going too fast, just stop. It's like that game you play at the arcade where the light goes around in the circle and you gotta hit the button when it lands on the one the one line. If you hit it, all the lights go off and you win all those tokens. It's the same thing with the piranha. Just wait for him to come around and then just completely stop, aim straight ahead, blast them. It's an alternative to, to circling with them, especially if you're not fast enough. They like to get up close, they like to get right up on you, behind you, or in front of you. A lot of the times you can't even, you can't look down that far. So, if you got streaks, you got nothing to worry about. Anyways, I just wanted to showcase the Roughneck, just, you know, a quick video. I like doing quick videos sometimes. One kill, nine assists, KMDD, we did a good amount of damage well over 500 damage so I mean that's it's 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 a mech that can dish out it can brawl it can do it all you just can't brawl PPCs because there's a 90 meter range on them so anyways guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time Fuzzy Nova out